What's up guys, Manny here. Let's do a trip to the past and see how my body changed over the years while doing this climbing thing. I did a little digging into my video archive to assemble an I think quite interesting timeline, so let's check it out. For starters we have this shot, which was filmed almost 5 years ago in early 2015, taken from the first video I ever recorded and uploaded to YouTube. Not more than an experiment back then, but pretty funny actually, yet not visible to the public. I might release it as a 100k subscriber special or something, maybe, in case we ever get there. Anyway, I was training myself back into shape, one-legged, after a severe talus fracture which I acquired from an outdoor bouldering accident during Christmas 2014, during one of the first encounters I ever had with outdoor bouldering actually. Not a good start with this discipline, unfortunately. And it should take me some time to overcome the now ingrained fear of jumping down outdoors with crash pads and stuff like that, as we will see. Obviously I was pretty lean back then. From my Tooth Fairy training diary I read out an average weight of around 64 kilograms, which will Will be interesting to track throughout this journey. I thought it would also be cool to track how my training developed. Back then I was spending most of my time indoors in this quite old school bouldering gym in Vienna, the city where I lived and was studying. And since uni didn't take much of my time, I had a lot of time left for training, probably more than was good for me actually. On average I trained five to six days a week and sometimes two times a day adding at home hangboard sessions. Outdoor sessions occurred mostly on weekends when my friends and I had time for it, weekend warrior stuff. I was 24 years old and I pretty freshly followed a high carb low fat vegan diet for a bit less than a year I think and I was quite strong despite a forced bigger rest after the accident obviously. At least I was handling the old 45 degree system wall pretty well one legged. Already quite a bit of muscles visible in arms, pretty flat back though which I find interesting. To track great development, let's talk about outdoor results as well. At this point I had done 4 8Bs, 5 14 Ds in for you Yankee Doodles over there and one probably soft 8B+, which is 514A. So it's pretty safe to say that my lead climbing level was around 8B back then, pretty much zero outdoor bouldering experience. Fast forward one year to early 2016, I had started to upload apart from uncut root descents, also other stuff like this my hangboard video, and I wanted to dig this one out because we get a pretty nice front and back upper body shots, back still pretty flat as it seems, which we can use for a comparison with later physiques. Very lean, baby face, average weight of around 63 kilograms, a bit pale as you can see, but that could be lighting as well. 25 years old, still into the high carb low fat vegan thing, which delivered pretty acceptable results. I have to say at this point I had done 11 8Bs and 3 8B+, still pretty much zero outdoor bouldering experience. Training picked up well again to 5-6 to six days a week with sometimes double sessions. I was very motivated because I had a pretty massive project actually. Around 3 months later, on the 30th of April 2016, I managed to send my first 8C, 514B, a route called Selbst is das Kind, located in Lower Austria, after about one autumn and one spring of projecting, over 70 goes in that thing, the most time I ever spent on a project to this day. We see a very lean, still 25 year old Manny, lots of details on muscle fibers and very thin skin in the face, cheekbones popping like, I don't know, ant hills maybe. Quite conditioned as well, I think down to around 62 kilograms. This route taught me a lot in terms of conditioning. For the first time I climbed so close to my limit that I could really feel the positive effects of low temperatures and of course low body weight on climbing performance, which is why I started to pay a bit more attention to meal compositioning and timing. Back then my high performance strategy was pretty much glycogenogenic carbs, in other words starch and zero fat before performance days and either nothing for breakfast or a very light fruit meal, you know, that would digest super quickly. Still everything within the realm of the high carb vegan thing and I gotta say that worked pretty well. I still use some of these strategies today. Training went great too, 5-6 to six times a week as usual and at this point I had done 12 8Bs, 3 8B+, and of course 1 8C. Now moving on to a couple of shots from late 2016, firstly this Chris Webb Parsons hangboarding video for some you know good body shots again and then we have this 37Cs slash V9 for the Yankee Doodles of Magic Wood bouldering video which too delivers a good impression on how my body was like back then. This was my first real contact with outdoor bouldering after the accident back in 2014 and I was quite happy to get a couple of problems done during this I think two week long bouldering adventure which amongst others yielded my first 8A boulder and it was through this little trip that I learned about the significant strengthening effect of consistent outdoor bouldering. I also learned that in popular holiday bouldering areas like Magic Wood, grades were quite a bit softer compared to my local spots, which was motivating of course. 
From the footage it seems I was a bit more muscular during that time, still very lean, but for the first time it seems as if a bit of back development was cruising in. Still on a high carb low fat vegan diet, now almost 26 years old, training still pretty much balls to the walls as usual. I don't know my exact weight from this period, but I'd guess from surrounding measurements around 64 kilograms. Regarding outdoor results, I had ticked 13 8Bs, 3 8B pluses, 2 8Cs, roots that is, and now also my first 8A bowler. Now we're taking a big leap, fast forward around one year to late 2017, this was the autumn after a big, very successful and overall epic Greece trip to Leonidio during winter and early spring, where I got a lot of lead climbing done and pretty much right after that there was this Mexico adventure, which acted like a two month rest basically as I couldn't get a lot of climbing or training done there. After all that I was getting back into shape during summer and now here in autumn I just did my second 8A boulder called Schattenkrieger in an area called Silvretta in one session, which leads me to believe that it is rather a soft one, you know. I remember that this little Silvretta trip motivated me to focus more on outdoor bouldering also in my local spots, which should have a dramatic impact on my overall fitness as we will see. We see a pretty lean Manny, no big changes, weight around that time around 65 kilograms, still pretty flat back, still doing the high carb vegan thing, you know, almost 27 years old, back to training hard 5 to 6 times a week, having put my master's degree studies on ice to focus on this climbing and video making thing full time because it was just so much more fun. And another thing worth mentioning is that the guy with whom I was there inspired me to start this calisthenics thing with him, essentially handstand ups, planche attempts and front lever to strengthen antagonists and body tension. He was and probably still is a lot more advanced in that department, but because I was a beginner and got the right tips from him I could improve very quickly, which kept me motivated enough to do this kind of thing more or less regularly to this day, and I think it had a significant impact on my body as well. And then another life-changing event occurred. A girly cosmetic website sent me a bioimpedance scale for free, which besides body weight can also give a rough impression on body fat percentage, which I use and abuse to this day. Consequently, I made a video measuring all my stuff. I weighed in at around 65.5 kilograms with 9.8% body fat. Outdoor results wise, I had at this point climbed 22 8Bs, 6 8B pluses, 2 8Cs roots, and now also 2 8A boulders. Fast forward half a year, skipping over a quite successful but painfully cold winter trip to Siorana, Spain, where I got a lot of lead climbing done and where I started diet experimenting beyond the realm of veganism again, essentially because I was cold all the time, leading to the 10th of April 2018, on which I managed to send my first 8A plus bowler. I think that is V12, this time at my local spot, and I was pretty happy about that, because I think that's a pretty tough one actually. At this point I had spent quite some time with outdoor bouldering, as I had the feeling this was pushing my fitness up significantly, and I think I got pretty strong. Thanks to the new, more mixed diet, I also discovered the effects of eating frequency on performance, body weight and compositioning. I started experimenting with reducing eating frequency and fasting, something which doesn't really come to mind as a high carb vegan where you pretty much always run from one meal to the next. For this bowler I was quite conditioned as well without a doubt, down to about 63 kilograms, very lean but kind of muscular at the same time, 27 years old, already quite a bit of back development visible compared to former times I have the feeling, and I started to like this really crappy greasy small hold limestone bouldering of my local areas. I remember it felt like I had better finger strength to body weight ratio than ever before, which I also felt indoors and on the hangboard. This period of my climbing peaked on the 1st of July 2018 when I sent my first 8B bowler, that is V13 I think, after a short period of intense conditioning which I termed Mission 8B and documented on this channel as well. It involved some pretty intense training and fasting which led me to drop weight from around 63 kilograms to around 61 kilograms performance weight after the feed on performance day and for the first time the scale showed below 8% body fat. I think I never had been this conditioned for an ascent and consequently it worked out and the 8B went down despite weather conditions far from peak season. This Manny was extremely lean and dry but he preserved his muscles quite well as it seems we see a strong back and something interesting which is new, development of the delts, which without a doubt has something to do with the handstanding and planche attempts I was doing at the time, both of these hit delts quite hard. And without a doubt new personal record finger strength to body weight ratio, which I believe I actually did not ever regain after this ascent until recently. 
Training-wise, I was spending less time indoors than ever before, as the cool thing with outdoor bouldering is that you can do it alone, plus it's more effective, so the number of solo outdoor bouldering adventures went up rapidly to about 2-3 to three sessions per week, plus maybe one indoor session and home hangboarding, of course. At this point, I had done 26 8Bs, 11 8B pluses and 3 8Cs in terms of roots, and 5 8As and 3 8A plus boulders, and of course, one 8B boulder. Fast forward again to late 2018, now 28 years old, I had moved my living and climbing focus more towards Styria in the south of Austria, where there are excellent crags as well, with sometimes very short and bouldery routes, just how I like it. One of these was an 8B plus called Kiriku, extremely bouldery, which went down quite unexpected on the 22nd of December 2018 with the help of just epic outdoor conditions without much conditioning effort from my side. I was back at an average weight of 65 kilograms and it felt like I had gained a bit more subcutaneous fat back on the new diet, being always at around 10% body fat on the scale, which already makes a visible difference to the former super shredded times, I think. And I remember I started noticing that I was significantly less sensitive to the cold in winter as well, which was cool. I picked this next stop on the timeline because it marks the start of projecting what should turn out to be my first 8C plus mode selector, which is just a different exit to the Kiriku thing. Training wise I kept indoor sessions at a minimum, maybe two sessions on average per week, mostly working on the new system wall in the climbing gym in Fürstenfeld, while trying to keep outdoor sessions at a maximum, of which I got one to two per week. Still doing the calisthenic stuff as well, but almost zero outdoor bouldering now, firstly because I didn't know the spots yet and secondly because root climbing there was so bouldery anyway. On shots from the time we see a mani which is more puffy, almost a bit chubby, the additional fat is visible, and there were also significant gains in back and delts, mostly due to the calisthenics I think. At this point I had done 27 8Bs, 13 8B pluses, 5 8Cs in terms of roots, and 7 8A bowlers, 3 8A plus bowlers, and 1 8B bowler. Fast forward to one year, now 29 years old. Damn, getting old here. Standard weight went up again to 66 kilograms at 10% body fat. We see a quite juicy mani, lots of back, lots of delts, just having sent his first 8C plus on the 8th of November 2019 through the means of mediocre conditioning, which put him down to around 63 kilograms, and also because he picked up outdoor bouldering again, which made his finger strength to body weight ratio peak to new personal best levels. Yet this performance mode looked quite different from the one at Mission 8B back in 2018. Still not training all too much indoors, trying to get as much outdoor climbing in as possible, two times indoors, maybe one to two times outdoors per week, plus some home hangboarding as usual. The tick list is now 32 8Bs, 13 8B pluses and 7 8Cs and 1 8C plus in terms of roots and 7 8As, 4 8A pluses and 1 8Bs in terms of boulder. Time for a conclusion I think. Seems like during the first few years I dropped standard body weight because that's what a high carb vegan lifestyle does in combination with lots of activity. Midway I started the calisthenics thing which built my delts and back maybe more than necessary, who knows. Once adopting a mixed diet again my body fat as well as standard weight went back up, as well as further development in overall strength. In other words, what I could climb through lightness in the past I would now climb with more power simply. And since body weight is so crucial in climbing it made greater conditioning efforts necessary to achieve peak performance which is now greater than ever, although not much admittedly. Also, outdoor bouldering is crucial, as discussed numerous times before. The rest you can make up yourself after you've dropped a like onto this freaking epic sod. And don't forget to leave a comment down below as well, that's cool as you know. And I'll see you soon in the next one. Peace.